Hello and welcome to the second video for the module on Cartesian Geometry, and here we're going to focus on lines. Before we do that, let's talk a little bit about equations and coordinates. In the previous video, we reviewed what a Cartesian coordinate was and how it identified points in the plane. If I have an equation that involves the coordinates x and y, I can take a point and wonder if the point fits into that equation. The point has an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. So I can replace the x-coordinate with the x-coordinate of the point. I can replace the y-coordinate with the y-coordinate of the point, and I can see if it satisfies the equation. If I use the point 4, 0, the left side is 0. The right side, 1 half 4 plus 2 is 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. That's not equal. That doesn't satisfy the equation, so the point 4, 0 is not on the shape. However, if I try the point negative 2, 1, I replace the y with 1, I replace the x with negative 2. The left side is 1, 1 half of negative 2 is negative 1, negative 1 plus 2 is equal to 1. That works. So this point is on the shape. So in this way, an equation in the variables x and y corresponds to a set of points. And a lot of sets of points can in fact be described by equations. And this is really the power of Cartesian geometry, of connecting algebra in this equation to something geometric. I want to focus now on specifically shapes which are straight lines. And by lines I'm going to mean extended off to infinity without limit. We can look at segments of them, but in terms of equations it's easiest to talk about lines that extend off to infinity. Here's a line and here's a bunch of points that satisfy it. And I want to see in general can I come up with a way of thinking, uh, of describing algebraically what a line is and how to determine all of these points by some algebraic method. The way this works is that lines correspond to equations where the variable x and the variable y show up once multiplied by a constant and with no other operations or functions. So there's no powers of y, there's no roots of y, or x for that matter, there's no sines and cosines and exponentials and logarithms, anything else to do with y, there's just y and x multiplied by constants added together um, or subtracted from each other with other constants. So here are examples of lines, equations that do form lines. And these are called linear equations because they lead to lines in the plane. So here's y, here's 7x, um, there's a subtraction of a constant that's allowed, added and multiplied together, nothing else going on. Here's 5y, here's 4x, here's a constant. We can add them together, we can subtract them from each other, that's going to lead to a y. The constants can be uh, fractions, they don't have to be whole numbers. 1 fifth y, 2 sevenths x subtracted minus a constant. The constants can be irrational numbers, that's fine as well, root 7y, pi times x, constant of 1 over root 19. And if I want to think of sort of the most general form, I can think of it this way. As I multiply x by some constant, I multiply y by some constant, I add some other constants. If I want to get subtraction, I can make any of these a1, a2, or a3 negative, which essentially leads to subtraction. So this is sort of the most general form of an equation of a line. And any line is going to fit this equation. That's not the most intuitive way to do it though. So for the rest of the video, what I really want to do is I want to set up a more intuitive way of describing lines by equations. And to do that, we need to review the notion of slope. Let's look at a line, let's look at two points on the line. I can form this triangle where I sort of look horizontally and vertically from those two points. And I can figure out how much it goes up. And I'm gonna call that the rise. The rise is how much we increase from one point to another. And that increase is going to be the difference in the y-coordinates, 5 minus 3. So the rise here between the, these two points is 2. We've gone two units from here to here up in the y-axis. I can also look how much I've gone over. And I'm going to call that the run. These are relatively conventional terms. Um, I'm going to look now at the x-coordinates. So I'm going to look at the final x-coordinate, 6 minus the starting x-coordinate 2, and I see I've gone 1, 2, 3, 4 units over in x, and the run is 4. So I've gone 2 units over, sorry, I've gone 4 units over, I've gone 2 units up, 
the slope is going to be the ratio of those two things. It's going to be the rise over the run, how much we go up divided by how much we go over. And that sort of makes sense because we go up a lot and we go over a little, we're going to have a large number. That's going to be a steep line. If we go up a little and over a lot, that's going to be a shallow line. It's going to have a large denominator. It's going to be a small number. So this does in fact measure the steepness or shallowness of the line. This is called slope. And we can get it from any two points on the line by doing this rise over run. Now I want to set up what's called a sloped intercept form. To do that, I'm going to take some equations of the lines that I had a couple of slides ago, and I'm going to solve for y. The first one was already in the form where I solved for y. The second one had everything over to the left. So if I solve for y, there's a bunch of algebraic steps, which I'm not going to do here. But you add 10, you subtract 4x from both sides, you divide by 5, you get y equals something like this. The one with fractions, I can solve this one for y as well. I'm going to skip the algebra steps. You get this. Whenever I solve for y, what I get is I get something times x plus a constant or minus a constant. Something times x plus or minus a constant. Something times x plus or minus a constant. So I can think of that as a general form. In any equation, I can always solve for y. So I get y equals something times x plus something else. And if b is negative, I can think of minus something else. And this, this is going to be called our slope-intercept form. And these numbers, m and b, are going to have geometric interpretation. Specifically, this number m is going to be the slope. And this is the lovely thing about solving for y, is that this coefficient you get in front of x is always exactly the slope of your line. And then this number b is going to be the y value, or the coordinate, the y coordinate where we cross the y axis. We call that the y intercept. So in this case, this would be at negative 2. If it was up here, it might be at positive 3, whatever that number is where we cross the axis. So this form is entirely determined by the slope of the line and by the place we cross the axis. And that makes sense. If I know where I cross the axis and I know how steep my line is, I know exactly which line it is. And any line is entirely determined by those two pieces of information. Now I want to end this video with a couple of special examples. If I have a horizontal line in slope-intercept form, that means that the slope is zero. A horizontal line is a line that doesn't have any slope. It doesn't increase at all. The rise is zero. So the slope rise or run is zero over whatever, um, which is always zero. A horizontal line has zero slopes. If I put in zero, then zero times x, anything times zero goes away. So I just end up with y equals b. So horizontal lines are given by y equals a constant. And that makes sense because they are at a fixed y value. If I look at the graph here, this line is the line of all things that have y coordinate 6. Here's the origin here, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All things that have y coordinate 6. This is the line of all things that have y coordinate 4. This is the line of all things that have y coordinate negative 1. This is the line of all things that have y coordinate negative 3. And the x-coordinates along the x-axis can be whatever. So I can have the point here, 4, negative 3. I can have the point here, negative 2, negative 3. And then all of these points, I can put in whatever x-coordinate I want. So it makes sense the equation doesn't say anything about the x-coordinate, because the x-coordinate can be anything. The equation says the y-coordinate has to be exactly negative 3. So a horizontal line is given by y equals a constant. Now what about a vertical line? If horizontal lines are given by y equals a constant, then vertical lines should be given by x equals a constant. And that sort of makes sense as well, because in a vertical line, the x-coordinate is fixed. The position on the x-axis never changes, and the y-coordinate, how high or low we are, can be anything. So this line here is all points that have x-coordinate 5. So if I go up 3, I can have 5, 3. If I go up 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I can have 5, 7. If I go down 2, I could have 5, negative 2. The y-coordinate changes, but the x-coordinate never, never changes at all. So vertical lines are given by x equals a constant. A line at negative 7, a line at negative 3, a line at 3, a line at 5. One last thing about vertical lines. I didn't talk about slope-intercept form here, and that's important because a vertical line does not have a slope. 
there is no run. So if I did rise of a run, I would be doing increase divided by zero, and division by zero doesn't make sense. So a vertical line has no slope, so cannot be put into slope intercept form. Also has no y intercept, so also doesn't make sense to have an intercept in slope intercept form. Every other line can be expressed in slope intercept form, except for vertical lines. So it's useful to have this expression of x equals a constant to let us know how to express vertical lines. To recap, we have slope intercept form tells us about most lines, y equals mx plus b, m is the slope, b is the y intercept, horizontal lines, y equals a constant, and vertical lines, x equals a constant.